Hey YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about a simple three light setup that you can take anywhere for great on location portraits. Before we begin, this channel is sponsored by Adorama, which buys me the time to create these type of videos without the influence of any specific camera brand. I personally shop at Adorama for their great deals on a really wide variety of products, as well as their support of those products down the road. So if you end up enjoying this video, please give it a like and also give Adorama some support by using the links in the description below. So a majority of my work is not in a closed controlled environment. It's usually on location, at a wedding, or at an editorial job, and I'm always working within the confines of that environment. And at almost every shoot, I need a very clean portrait with a simple background, and when I need that, I rely on the same lighting setup almost every time. So before we dive into the technique, let's talk real quick about the gear that I used for the content in this video, and that was three 8200s, all three of which have the round head on them. That's pretty much all I'm using for my 8200s nowadays. For modifiers, I'm using the 28 inch glow deep parabolic. So I'm using that because that's such a perfect size for this type of mobile work. Last thing I used was a dome diffuser for one of the 8200s. Camera wise, A7R Mark III and the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master. That's enough about gear, let's talk about the execution. So the first thing that I'm doing when I'm selecting a location where I can execute these type of portraits is I'm paying attention to the background. That is the biggest thing that is kind of restricting what I do. So a lot of times in an environment, I find a background that I like and it has enough ambient that I can work with and then I'll add flash to that, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about shutting all the ambient down and taking control with just flash. In this situation, the client wanted a clean white background, so all I had to do was find a clean white wall. Before I ever fire a flash, the first thing I'm doing is getting my settings in camera right and shutting down the ambient light. Because the ambient light isn't making the light pattern that I want, I wanna shut it down completely so that it doesn't influence my image at all. My shutter speeds in these situations are typically 1 1 60th up to 1 250th of a second. Whatever the maximum sync speed of your camera works really well for this. From there, I choose the aperture that I'd like to shoot the headshots at. Finally, I modify my ISO as low as I need to go to get the image completely dark so that there's no ambient light. Now, if you go all the way down to ISO 100 and you've maxed your sync speed and you're still not getting rid of all the ambient light, then you're gonna have to either increase your f-stop or enter high speed sync. That is an option with the 8200s that I'm using, but wasn't necessary in this image. Now, I position my three lights in a classic pattern of key, fill, and background. The key light is the primary light for shaping the subject's face. I'm going to position my light somewhere in between seven or eight o'clock if my client is going to be on the right side of the image, and I position it in between three and four o'clock if my client's going to be on the left side of the image. I raise the light until the center of the light is just above eye level. That way, all the cast shadows are going downward on the face. This light position and height will create a looped shadow underneath the nose, which is something we're very used to seeing. Next, the fill light is positioned directly behind me above the camera. This ensures that the fill light is creating flat light. It is illuminating all the face evenly and you're not seeing any cast shadows created by that light. If I were to put it opposite my key light, then I would create cross shadows, crisscrossing shadows across the face, which is something you really don't want in a clean portrait because those shadows are very distracting. The background light is pointed directly at the background and it's placed directly behind my subject. That way I don't see it. I always make sure that there is significant space between the background light and the actual background. This ensures that the light is gonna travel a far distance as well as cover a wide area of the background with very even light. If I had a bare bulb on the 8200 instead of the round head here, this is where I'd be using a reflector. By creating that distance, you're also reducing the amount of light that's going to bounce back into your camera lens, which is something that in a studio you might omit with either a V-flat or some type of flag. But in the environment, if you don't have those tools with you, then it's easy to just create a significant amount of distance to reduce that. Because if you don't reduce it, you're going to have that washed out look in your portraits because you have so much light coming back into your lens. So once everything's in position, I test each light independently. I start with the background and I increase the power until I have the look of the background that I want. In this situation, I increase the power on the background until I see pretty much all white. There can be a little bit of darkness on the edges, I'm okay with that. 
because I don't want to go so bright that I'm starting to kick that light back into my lens and getting a lot of bounce and reducing the contrast of my image. So I push it just to the point where it's an easy fix in post if I want to go for a completely white background. So once I dial that light in, I turn it off and switch to my fill light. For the fill light, I'm looking to illuminate my subject, but I'm looking for an image that is about one and a half to two stops underexposed. So you want your subject to look a little bit darker because if your fill light is too powerful, then you're gonna diminish all the shadows that you create with your key light. Next, I move on to my key light. And again, I'm testing that independently as well. And all I'm looking for here is to properly illuminate my subject on whatever side of the face is closer to the light. Once I've got all three of those dialed in independently, I turn them all in and I begin working with my subjects. Now, for the most part, this is a really simple setup and you don't have to alter the position at all, but I do have to modify the height of the lights here and there. The background light, I'm typically modifying its height based on my subject's height. I rarely touch the fill light unless somebody is really tall or really short that I would have to switch it up but for the most part I can keep it just above my head. The key light is what I would modify the most because in addition to modifying the height sometimes I'm modifying the tilt as well to deal with reflections and glasses. So I modify the height based on my subject's height, but if they're wearing glasses, I might have to sacrifice the pattern of light a little bit just to make sure that I'm not getting any reflections. The first thing I do is I make them tilt their glasses downward as much as possible without it looking weird by their ear. And if that doesn't get rid of any reflections, then that's when I'm raising the height and tilting it down more to create a more downward light pattern on them. And yes, you have to sacrifice your light pattern a little bit, but ultimately you're not going home with any images that have a big glowing soft box in the glasses, which is not easy to fix. This setup has gotten me through so many situations, so it's always great to have in your tool bag as a great way to achieve some really simple portraits. Hope this video helped you out. Leave a like if it did. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. And until next time, keep on shooting YouTube.